How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Boy Lai Hobby Time. Today I'm making a scene with a terror bird racing through a desert in hot pursuit of an unlucky cowboy. This is a slightly smaller relative of the same bird that Tinu made for our Wild Western Show collaboration. The unlucky cowboy I'm using for this diorama came from a box of Imex Union Cavalry. I pulled out a few other boxes in preparation for the build, including this box of accessories, which contains some saguaros that I've been looking for an excuse to use. I wanted to use this gentleman right here because I liked his pose, but unfortunately he didn't have the right hat for the job. So I had to perform what might be considered a controversial medical procedure and I transplanted his old head wearing the old hat with a new one that was wearing the correct hat. Kind of reminds me of that lady from Return to Oz. I drill a hole between the shoulders of the original body as well as in the bottom of the new head with the correct hat. I then attach them together using a small styrene rod. An added benefit of doing it this way was that I could rotate the head later on if I wanted to. The surgery was a huge success, so I continued on by drilling a hole in the saddle of the horse to anchor the rider into position. I then glued the horse and its rider, and the bird, to a painting base and I set them aside for priming. After that, I removed the saguaros from their sprue trees and I prepped them all for priming as well. I've only ever seen these funky looking vegetables once in my life, and that was while driving from Denver to Phoenix, and I thought they were pretty fun to look at. Also felt kind of like looking at the Eiffel Tower for the first time. I've seen them in pictures all my life, but there's nothing quite as special as seeing them with your own eyes. I decided I needed to revisit the rider because I forgot something important, a forestall. I used some teeny tiny bits from my bits box as well as a pogo pin to create the safety device which may or may not help our boy in this scenario. I'll explain that later in the video. With the horse and rider equipped for the wild imaginary west, the figures were actually done and it was time to move on to the base. I grabbed an off cut from my XPS foam scrap bin and I cut it down to the size of my gesso board using my hot wire table. I know I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but make sure you have proper ventilation when cutting foam this way. After all four sides had been trimmed, I cut out the rough shape of my landscape and then I glued the two parts together using some foam safe super glue. I've been rebuilding my stockpile of plaster rocks recently, so I have a nice collection ready to choose from when I make dioramas like this. I grabbed a few rocks that had the right dimensions and look for a desert setting and I cut up the foam to match the flat backs of the rocks. I began gluing the rocks in place with more of that foam safe CA glue and began carving the foam to look more natural. I let the outlines of the rocks determine how I shaved the foam, made them look like they were blending into the landscape and a part of it and not just awkwardly placed pre-made plaster rocks. Of all the techniques and things that I do in this hobby, Forming these little landscapes like this might have to be my favorite. Once everything was set, I glued the foam to the gesso board and it was time to get messy, so I threw down an older, dirtier hobby mat to protect my nice, clean new one. For the section at the bottom level of this terrain, I wanted to make it like a nice, dried, crackling riverbed. My first attempt at that effect was to mix up a batch of plaster and dry it with a hairdryer, which is supposed to cause the outside to dry faster, forming usually unwanted cracks. I wasn't thinking and instinctually threw in some paint which added a slight amount of flexibility to the plaster mix, which is probably why it didn't end up cracking. I used a palette knife to apply the paste to the riverbed, and when I saw that it wasn't going to crack, I used the same paste to cover the rest of the diorama, and then I left it to air dry. I cleaned the plaster paste off the plaster rocks with some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush so that all the nice details would show through. I then added some pebbles and sand, and once that was dry, it was time for my second attempt at the crackling. This time around, I painted some Citadel texture paint over top of a coat of not quite dry white glue, a suggestion that I got from a friend at my local hobby store. I think I grabbed the wrong crackle paint so the cracks were fairly minimal, but they were quite convincing and I'm happy with the results. I'm excited to experiment further with different earth textures like this in the future. After the surface of the riverbed was covered, I threw on some exposed dinosaur bones and I took the base outside to prime. I also lined up all of my cactuses and took those outside to prime as well. After I had primed everything, I brought it all back inside and once the primer had dried fully, I began the painting. 
I painted the base colors of the landscape entirely with washes, something that I think leads to a nice natural looking appearance. I use Citadel washes for this because it's a fairly small landscape. For anything larger, I'd recommend homemade washes instead. After that was dry, I dusted on some pigment powder which I activated with isopropyl alcohol. It didn't produce the effect that I was hoping for, so I painted over all of the horizontal surfaces with a dusting of dusty sand color from the airbrush, which I think turned out great. After that, I felt like the base looked good and it was time to paint the cactuses. I've seen antennas that are dressed up like pine trees, and let's be real, they may be fooling the other pine trees, but they're certainly not fooling anyone else. Recently though, I did find out that they do the same thing with saguaros, and I think they're far more convincing. Which got me thinking, how else do they disguise antennas or similar equipment? Let me know in the comments if you can think of anything else. I actually hadn't thought through how I was going to paint this bird before I started putting colors on it. I just hoped for the best, which sometimes works, but in this case, I had to revise my paint scheme a number of times before I ended up with something that I was happy with. I got a question on my last town build regarding the bird in Tinu's traveling buffalo show and why it isn't bothered by the four stalls in the town. That's a great question, and the reason is that the tent is lined with a metal mesh that disrupts the signals and prevents them from getting in. This bird, on the other hand, isn't being deterred by the signal from the cowboy's forestall because he doesn't have it tuned to the right setting. This terror bird is outside of its usual range and the cowboy wasn't expecting to run into it here. This unpredictability is just another unfortunate danger and reality of the wild imaginary west. After brush painting all of the details on the cowboy, I dusted him up with the airbrush and then the painting was complete. I then removed the figures from their bases and it was time to glue them to the base, followed by the cactuses and some little grass tufts that I added off camera. Once all of the figures and the shrubbery were in place, the very last thing to do was to paint the sides of the diorama with black 4.0. After that, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.